Hello, this is Kelly from SkyServe. Uh, I wanted to put another updated workflow video uh, up because there are some new features in Metashape 1.6 that I wanted to, to go through. So even if you saw the previous workflow video, uh, I think you'll find value in this one. So the very first thing I'm going to do, if, if you guys are new to Metashape, is uh, I'm going to configure the screen. To change the, the look of the menu structure, we're going to go up here to Tools, Preferences, under Themes. Go ahead and choose Classic. This is, uh, this is a, very, uh, well, it's a very important thing for me. You guys might like the old, um, or the sorry, the new updated light style or dark style, but to me this is, this is just much better, more efficient use of space, etc. So first thing I'm going to do is add my photos. I'll go ahead and uh, add these photos. So I think there's about you know 10 or 11 photos here. It's a, it's kind of a small project. So so there we go. Uh, they're there. And uh, next step I'm going to do is go to the reference tab. And and I know that this is in Wisconsin Central. So um, I have other videos talking in more depth about this. But basically, here's the convert. So you're going to convert from WGS84 into a projected coordinate system. So uh, it's not showing up here. This is a new install. Um, so there's a couple ways to find this, I, I guess, uh, under projected coordinate systems. I believe it's uh, Wisconsin Central 2929, I, I believe is what it is. So I happen to know the EPSG code, so I put that in. Otherwise, you could go ahead and, and search for it. Um, so, so here it is, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, convert the, the cameras into this projected coordinate system. I don't need to convert the markers. There are no markers here. So I'm, I'm going to deselect those. So there you go. So now you have this in a projected coordinate system, um, you know, like state plane, for instance. Uh, and uh, those those are the numbers. So that's a, the first step. I, I always do that to get that consistent. Um, next step I can do is import my points. So I'm going to do the um, import my points right there and then uh, select the the format so here you go I have comma separated values the um, label for mine is actually in the fourth column um, I believe these are XYZ so I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> put in the uh, one two and three and then I'm going to uh, verify that this is correct so Eastings is about two four eight and then the northing is about a 252, 253 or so. So they look pretty good. Yeah, same coordinate system there. I'm going to go ahead and go, okay, I don't have any of these created, so I'm going to go ahead and create these. So I have three points here um, at the extents of the project. Uh, my next step is to go ahead and align these photos. Uh, I want to hear your guys' comments below. This is default 40,000 and 4,000 for your key points and tie points, respectively. Uh, I've changed this on high megapixel imagery. You know, if you have a 40 megapixel camera, you can change this up, you know, maybe to three or 400,000. Uh, and you can change this to zero, which means it will not limit the tie points. Uh, for this project, you know, uh, I'm going to leave it as defaults. Again, I want to hear your comments and ideas. Um, I had been using for, for a long time 120,000 um, and then limiting this to zero. But like I said, for this, I'm going to go ahead and use defaults. It, it, some people have arguments one way or the other. And I'm, I'm curious to see what you guys uh, have. And, and being that I'm using a DJI uh, consumer-grade camera, I'm going to use the adaptive camera model fitting. And then I'm going to change this for this video to be low. Uh, I would recommend everybody that's watching this to go ahead and use high. Um, but I'm going, to, I'm going to use low just because the... You know, just to be able to get through this tutorial. Uh, so th those are settings I'm using. Please comment below on your settings. And uh, now you'll see it. So I like to open up this <coughs> uh, this details option here. 
And that way you can kind of see what the process is, is doing. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back once this alignment is completed. Okay. The alignment is completed. So I can kind of view around here. Uh, one problem I'm seeing right away is uh, my rotation is, is really funny. I'd recommend you guys go to navigation mode and change it to terrain mode. That makes it, it only want to uh, pivot along this Z axis um, in one direction. Otherwise it flips upside down. So you'll notice a couple things. My, my ground control points are actually up above the imagery. This is due to an ellipsoid um, geoid difference. Uh, if you're familiar with, with uh, surveying and with WGS84 drone data, you might realize that you're, you're actually getting a height above ellipsoid here instead of a true orthometric height or an elevation. So keep that in mind, uh, but it's all right. The next step I have is going to be to go ahead and match these points anyway. So here's my matching process. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of that ball as well. So if you go over here, I believe it's under um, model show hide. I'm gonna I'm gonna not show that trackball in the middle. Uh, feel free to you know configure this workspace to to work for you. Uh, another tip I'll give you guys is if you press seven on your keyboard, you're gonna see that brings you to a north up uh, perspective from a nadir viewpoint. Uh, five changes it from uh, from a perspective view to an orthographic view. Um, so you'll see the the perspective view right here. That's more of a 3D type view. The ortho view is more of a of a 2D kind of a view from from the top top down. So it's kind of a preference there that you can uh, choose. So point matching. All right. So I know that this point uh, point six is up here. So I'm going to right click up in this area. I'm going to filter photos by point. Okay, so that just shows me photos that have this area in them. So you're not looking at all the photos. This really helps if you're using a big, big project. So I'm going to open up any one of the photos. Now, if I do a page down, this is going to show me where these, uh, where these points are. So I know that this is kind of on the northwest end of the project. If I look here, basically the far north. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, match this one. So again, I, I'm looking for point uh, number six. So if I go here, I'm going to place marker six right there. And then um, go to the next picture, which is a page down. And I'm going to go ahead and place marker six there. So I'm going to do each of these in, uh, in a couple photos. And you should see that these are going to match. So I'm going to go to point one. Again, filter photos by point. I can just open up a photo and hit page down. And then there you go. That's point one right there. These are nice images, really crisp. And uh, and uh, pretty low altitude flight. I believe this was a 100 foot flight we did. Okay, two photos there. Now I'm gonna go back to my model view and I'm gonna filter these photos over here. Uh, double click on any photo and then hit page down. And now I'm looking for my marker on this side. And I believe it's uh, it's right here. So I'm going to go ahead and place marker uh, number two right there. Place marker two. Okay, so now I'm going to go back into the model view. This is one of the the most uh, drastic points in your entire processing uh, process here. I'm going to update and optimize. So if you hover over here, this is an update. What that's going to do is it kind of brings your project down to the control points. I guess in this case, up to the control points. I'm going to go ahead and optimize. I'm going to use the adaptive model, uh, camera model fitting. Again, it's a DJI uh, quadcopter. And then this estimate tie points convergence is, is an option that you can utilize uh, when you view this point cloud. You can see it by covariance and uh, if you guys have any insight on this it'd be it'd be great to see that below but but um, some of these uh, options are new there's a point cloud variance and then once we generate the dense cloud you can see that there's a, a confidence as well 
So let's kind of uh, check this out and see see how we're doing. So go up here, uh, turn on this one with this little yellow triangle. That shows you your deltas right here. Um, and those deltas are, are in uh, in meters. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and and change my units. I, I just realized here that it's showing this in meters. So so if you typically work in feet, go to preferences here, and this changes to U.S. Survey foot or international foot. Uh, Minnesota, where where I'm based, is a is a U.S. foot state. So so we're typically using feet. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, another great tip that I want to share with you guys: if you right click on a on a on a point uh, on your screen or right click on the point itself, you can filter photos by markers. And and what this allows you to do is is use that page down function, and that shows you all of the photos where that marker uh, exists. And then you can go ahead and and match the rest of them. It, this will save you a ton of time on a big project. Um, so again, use that page down command, and then and then you can go through and match these points pretty quickly. Um, I'd encourage you guys maybe to do every other on big projects. I don't think you need to do every single one, but you're certainly welcome to. Uh, filter photos by markers here. I can fine tune this one a little bit if I want, um, and move these over. I'm just going to match every single one here, and I'll I'll share this data set if you guys want. Just comment below if you want me to. Uh, publish this data set for you guys to, to practice with. So one thing you're going to want to do after you get all these points matched is go ahead and update. See that? does like a best fit kind of a adjustment here. And then I'm going to check these bottom two for the adaptive camera model fitting and the, and the point covariance. So you can see we have some really good data right here. Everything's matching within a hundredth. And um, this is a, a Phantom 4 Pro 20 megapixel global shutter camera. So these are they're very nice images, no doubt. Um, okay, so we're back to the model. Um, the next step uh, that I want to do is create a dense cloud. So I'm going to go to Workflow, build a dense cloud. I'm going to choose low. Again, I would recommend you guys choose high. Um, I've used ultra high, but I haven't seen uh, significant gains from high, and it's just a lot more points. You about double or triple your points. And uh, for my workflow, I, I haven't seen an advantage. But again, I would use high. Uh, I'm going to use low on this, and I'm going to go ahead and calculate point confidence. This is new for Agisoft 1.6. I do recommend you do this, and, and I'll show you why in a little bit, but it, it's actually a very good uh, new feature, and um, well, I'm excited to show you guys here shortly. Uh, yours is going to take longer if you do high. This will only take a few seconds uh, on low. It may or may not be sufficient for your project. I wouldn't recommend it for production work. Okay, so we have our dense cloud created. Uh, it's not visible, but you can go ahead and turn it on right here. So this is uh, this is the dense cloud. It worked pretty good, but you're going to have a much better result with high. This excavator... It didn't model very well, but on high, you'll see that boom uh, models in its entirety. So here's what I wanted to show you guys in particular is this, this point cloud confidence. All right, so now you can see that basically in this, in this scenario, as these points get farther out, there's less and less confidence in the, in the, in the construction. Um, this is a new feature to Agisoft, and it's, it's been super useful to me, and in my survey practice. So um, you, you will see that there's an option up here for dense cloud to go ahead and filter by confidence. Now, I've found that this filter, you know, you can, you can filter it up to 255 on the max end. The minimum is what you want to change. And um, I found that basically it's between 0 and 15 is where the range is. So, so this is a low image, a low overlap kind of a project. So I'm actually going to use uh, something like two. Okay, so now you see that took out some points, but not a significant number. I'm going to go back and uh, filter by confidence again. I'm going to jump it up to four. All right, so four. So that really trims it down. And I'm going to go one more notch. You know, my real goal here is to get this sand pile uh, surface. So I'm going to I'm going to go one more. I'm going to go up to six. So if I go to point cloud filter, 
filter by confidence. I'm going to go up to six and see what that does. And that's that's pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of getting rid of everything on the outside. Uh, I might actually go up to seven. So if I filter by confidence, if I go up to seven, um, that's that's actually really good. I'm going to go with that. It filters everything out that I might not need. Um, you're going to be amazed when you have a project with water. Um, this will wipe out any of that noise that you're seeing against uh, against water. And um, it's, it's, it's really a, a cool feature. So the next thing I'd encourage you guys to do is go ahead, turn off your photos, uh, turn off your ground control, and just kind of look at this. And, and like I said, I, I told you guys my, my goal here is, is this pile in the middle. So select what points you wanted to, to use as your surface. So I'm going to go ahead in this case and, and focus on this larger pile and create a ground surface. So now you have these. Uh, this selection right here now, and this is the filtered by confidence point cloud. Keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and uh, classify these points. So I'm going to assign a class, and I'm going to assign a class of ground. Okay, um, so if they're assigned a class of ground, now you can filter by classes, and you can see this is the ground class. And it is important to, to, to note that, that you do this, otherwise I don't know of a way to create an actual mesh or surface um, filtering by confidence, uh, unless you do this filter, then classify as ground, and then create the mesh. So my next step is going to go ahead and I'm going to build a mesh. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the dense cloud, uh, arbitrary. I'm going to do a face count, I guess, of, of low. Um, 20,000 faces should be more than sufficient for this small pile. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select a class. Now you want to uncheck that check ground and then might as well create some, some vertex colors and go ahead and hit OK. Uh, if, it was, if it was me doing this on a project and I had a little bigger site, I'd probably go to two or 300,000 uh, vertexes. You know, that's a, a good number. You should be able to. Uh, make a good model of that, but it's not going to overload a, a CAD software. If if you use three or four million po uh, point vertexes, there's a good chance you're going to crash your Civil 3D or whatever AutoCAD uh, program you're using. Okay, so now we have that uh, created, and, and I like to look at this probably by like a wireframe. So now you can see that this is your, uh, uh, your model. Uh, it looks very good. I think that's that's probably sufficient for my use. So so I'm going to go ahead and uh, and export that as a as a um, DXF with 3D lines, and I can import that into my drafting software. So a couple ways to export: you can actually go here to the workspace, and you can right click on the 3D model and export the model. I'll just put it right here in the downloads, my favorite spot to put files temporarily. Um, I generally use a DXF with 3D faces, and I'll just call this uh, sand. Uh, you are going to want to preserve your coordinates. Make sure you select your, your projected coordinate system there. If you do a local coordinates, it's going to come out at essentially 0, 0 in the bottom left corner. Uh, it's probably not ideal if you're using this on a survey workflow. If you're going to 3D print this, that probably would work and, and might even be beneficial because you're going to have uh, more reasonable coordinates for a 3D printer. And go ahead and hit OK. That exports that file. And now um, you're ready to import that into Civil 3D. So hopefully this has been valuable uh, tutorial for, for everyone out there. And uh, I'd love to hear from you guys in the bottom. And if you want to visit my store or support me in any other way, um, I'd appreciate it. So thanks a lot for tuning in. Bye-bye.